Boy, it's so good to be back in the great state of Arizona, whether we're tubing down the Salt River. We've all done that before, taking a trip to the Grand Canyon. This is our state. This is Fox Sports Arizona. I'll tell you, some dangerous clubs coming to town, and starting with the Cincinnati Reds, the best team in the National League Central Division and the best offensive team in all of the National League, going head-to-head -head with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Hello there, folks, and welcome back to the ballpark. He is Mark Grace. My name is Darren Sutton. Glad to have you with us, and we trust early on that your week has been a good one. Let's talk about Daniel Hudson, one of the newest members of the Diamondbacks and in that rotation. And he does it, first of all, very successfully. We'll talk about how he does it in a moment, but so far, so good for the right-hander. Yeah, he's come over, and well, every time he takes the mound, he's absolutely dominated, Darren. He's been a lot of fun to watch. The Diamondbacks gave up a lot in Edwin Jackson, but they're starting to feel like, you know what, they got a lot back. All right, let's break things down with regard to what he throws, and I don't need to go too in-depth. All we need to know is that he throws a lot of fastballs. Explain how he can be so successful throwing that many fastballs. Well, Sunday we saw Steven Strasburg throw a lot of fastballs anywhere from 98 to 100 miles an hour. Now, Hudson doesn't need that much, but what he's got is some late life on his fastball, folks. That means it gets something about halfway there, and then bam, it is by those hitters. This is just flat-out gas right there. When you're getting chases up at the letters, you have a very good fastball. All right, now, he faces a fabulous offensive club, one of the best in all of baseball right now, talking about the Cincinnati Reds. What does it all mean? First up, the standings. Well, they were swept last week by the St. Louis Cardinals. They, in turn, went and swept the Florida Marlins. And so Cincinnati is back rolling again. Gracie, you can help us meet the Cardinals as we remind everyone who, of course, not the Cardinals, these Cincinnati Reds are with Bronson Arroyo on the mound. Yeah, Bronson Arroyo, a finesse pitcher, a guy that throws a lot of off-speed stuff, but he's had a lot of trouble against the Diamondbacks. Now, they can hit. These guys can flat out hit. They hit homers, they hit for average, they hit with runners in scoring position, and these two guys on the left of your screen are the main guys in the middle of the order. Joey Votto, if you ask me, is having an MVP season. Arroyo starts tonight. Mike Leake out of ASU will pitch out of the bullpen from this moment forward and do so for the Cincinnati Reds. Baker announcing that before the game. We're glad to have you with us. An interesting day, by the way, around Major League Baseball yesterday, and it meant nothing, nothing to do with games being played on the field. Millions and millions of dollars spent late in the summer on guys that waited and waited to sign their professional contracts. What does it all mean? Mark McClellan will explain as we continue. Then it's a three-game series against the Reds.
Most proud partner of the Diamondbacks. Sanderson Ford, Arizona's largest Ford dealership. Southwest Airlines. Visit southwest.com. Grab your bag. It is on. And welcome back to downtown Phoenix. Just about set for the first pitch between the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Cincinnati Reds. Today, the Diamondbacks looking towards the future as last night was the last chance for the Diamondbacks to sign their draft picks from 2010. And there will be three new members of the organization signing at the last minute. Let's take a look at the graphic as the Diamondbacks sign two high school pitchers, Blake Perry and Tyler Green. They're uh, sixth and eight rounders. Perry out of Florida and Tyler Green out of Brazoswood, Texas. And also Ty Lenton, who was enrolled at the University of North Carolina to play football. He will join the organization as an outfielder. First round pick, Barrick Lux, will not sign with the organization. Both the organization and Lux released a statement. You can read all about the story. It's a complicated story. Jack Magruder has an article right now up on FoxSportsArizona.com. But there will be three new members joining the organization. Kirk Gibson fired up, even if he doesn't quite know a whole lot about the kids yet. It's our Geico quote of the game. I trust that we got some good guys. I, I know the the last guy was a football guy. That excites me. <laughs> I like that mentality. I really do. And uh, just in general, <clears throat> something we'd like to see more of. And Gibson, of course, an all-Big Ten wide receiver at Michigan State. Tonight, Daniel Hudson gets the ball for Gibson and the Arizona Diamondbacks trying to stay undefeated as a Diamondback. He'll have to face the hot Cincinnati Reds. It's a tough test as the Reds lead the National League in runs per game. Darren Sutton and Mark Grace have the call, and it's next. Reds, Brandon Phillips will lead things off for Dusty Baker's club. Bronson Arroyo ready to roll as he walks in. Baker saying before the game when asked, what do you like better? Pennant race as a player or pennant race as a manager? He said, oh, I loved it as a player because when you're in a pennant race as a player, I could win the game by myself. I didn't have to worry about nine other players. got a little bit of control, exactly. He said, but don't get me wrong. I have been waking up every morning. Everything tastes better when you're in a pennant race. And that is a thousand percent true. Glad to have you with us tonight. This is going to be a fun series, a nice test for Arizona. As Phillips takes strike one and a nice test for this young right-handed pitcher. Brandon at 281. 14 homers out of that leadoff spot. He has scored 82 runs this year. 
Diving attempt by Steven Drew. So Phillips is on. He is on with 13 stolen bases. He has been caught seven times. Let's take a look at the rest of Johnny B. Dusty Baker is starting on it for the Cincinnati Reds. Lance Nix trying to resurrect his career. Doing a pretty good job. Joey Votto could be the MVP in the National League. It's Roland. It's Bruce. It's Ryan Hannigan. Drew stubbed Paul Yanish and Bronson Arroyo. Stubbs just a bad ball hitter. He will kill a mistake. And same could be said for this man, Lance Nix. Kind of a guy that has been a journeyman throughout his career. Uh, appeared in the big leagues on a couple of occasions. But it's been the same as we take a look at the numbers for Daniel Hudson as well. Brought to you by the UPS store. 1.59 ERA. Opponents hitting just 165 against him. Not much to argue about there, is it? He's just been terrific in his three starts. But everywhere Nick's goes, it's the same. Struggles a little bit with the batting average. Ends up getting hurt at an inopportune time. But in the middle of it all, when you make your mistakes, he plays a lot of pepper with the bleachers. He can hit some homers if you make he's a mistake. A, he's a strong young man. Only four home runs so far this year. But like you said, any mistake, he'll kill. Lines that one to left field. And Para puts that one to bed. Phillips will have to get back. I think Phillips thought that was heading off the wall. Let's take a look defensively for Arizona. Understand this is a fly ball pitcher. So Parra Young Upton, very important. The infield of Reynolds, Drew, hard hitting Kelly Johnson and Adam LaRoche. Miguel Montero catches Daniel Hudson. But when he pitches, it's Parra, it's Young, and it's Upton. They have got to stay on their horse. As Joey Votto gets ready to go to work, well, where do we start with these numbers? 322, 28 home runs, 79 RBIs, an on base percentage of well over 400. Our Amica insurance hits on. And he gets in trouble. Any daddy does when it's at the belt and away. Get those hands extended. Like most left handed hitter, hitters, likes the ball down. Hudson. Take a look at that changeup, and the count is one and one. That right now is clearly the secondary pitch for him. For the called strike. He's got a couple of different ones. One he likes to throw for the called strike when he's down the count, and then he's got the swing and miss one that he likes to bounce. 28 home runs of career high for Votto. And the fastball right back over the inside corner. One and two the count. He took a day off, a rare day off, Votto did, on July 22nd. In his 20 games since, he's hitting 397. Well, maybe he needed a day off. He's had some early ball game snaps, and it's been tossed. That one over the outside, 87 miles an hour. I think that was just. And I, it was beautiful in the end because he got a strike up, but kind of an ugly little slider. Yeah, just uh, a, a slider that kind of stayed right where it was, right on the outer third. But right past Joey Votto. Well, I love that Fox Mo. That's big league. Now we're talking. And that's what we talked about in the open. You can expect fastballs if you're a hitter. But I give this young pitcher a lot of credit because he knew in Votto, no matter the life he has on his pitches, he's not going to get away with all fastballs. So he showed him some other looks. Against the great hitters, you have to mix it up. You cannot just stay stubborn with the same pitch time and time again. The great hitters will hurt you badly if you throw them the same pitch three, four times in a row. What a career it's been for this man, Scott Rowland. What a year he has had offensively, hitting 298 with 18 home runs, 65 batted in. He was an all-star for the sixth time this year. One of the best base runners I ever played against, Scott Rowland. Big man with good speed and great instincts on the base. Yeah, expound upon that. Do you mean like he always knew the right time to take the extra base, to goes, go first to third? Goes first to third better than any, any player I've ever seen, and that includes Vince Coleman or any of the really fast guys. He's not as fast as those guys, but nobody I have ever seen goes first to third better than Scott Rowland. Battled some injuries in the second half. There's the change up. I tell you, he is not all fastballs at all out of the gates. Still about six out of ten. 
Well, he also understands what he's up against. This is not an ordinary lineup. This is one of the best lineups in all of baseball. He's got some options. What does he throw here? That fastball will have even more life. On one, two. There it is. Fastball in. Went right in on the belly button of Scott Rowland, but just missed inside. You know what's funny there, Gracie? He can go straight when he wants to. Uh -huh. I mean, that was a straight fastball, and he threw it right where he wanted to. The 2-2. Two -two. Late on it. Change-ups in the back of his mind. Tried to go in again. Montero wanted it in, but he went down the middle. And You've got life on your fastball when you can go down the middle and still beat a major league hitter, a quality major league hitter like Scott Rowland. Let's see what Miguel wants here. All right. What are you up to there, Miguel? What do you like? Well, you like the slider, do you? Okay. Be careful. Yeah, that was careful. Got that it out was there. good. Hey, can't be a great base runner when he strikes out. Nicely done, Daniel Hudson. That bit's starting to show me something there. That's a good slider. Daniel Hudson, we're keeping an eye on what he delivers, when he delivers it, and the secondary stuff, a nice addition out of the gates against the most dangerous offensive club in the National League. Chris Young ready to lead things off. Beyond him, our Southwest Airlines starting lineup has Kelly Johnson, Justin Upton, Adam LaRoche, Miguel Montero, Mark Reynolds, Stephen Drew. Don't forget about Gerardo Parra and Daniel Hudson, who, oh, by the way, has five runs batted in. Oh, that slow curveball from the salty veteran Bronson Arroyo as he gets ready to go. Born in Key West, Florida. 33 years young. He's been at it for a while as that little cut fastball grabs the outside. 0 2 the count this year. Another good year on his way to 200 innings and 15 or more victories. He's one of those right handers you'd say he's crafty, Darren. Three different pitches that he'll throw anytime fastball, curveball, changeup. And lots of different arm angles. It's fun to watch him pitch, for me anyway. I don't know how folks feel about it. It's fun to watch him try to invent things as he goes along. The straight legged, the high leg kick, straight legged, and then he comes. Young was ready for a pitch that was up in the zone, trying to get away with the fastball, a high fastball. CY heads on around, and Chris with a double. A good way to start things for Chris. Runner in scoring position right away. Yeah, Chris Young has made a good living this year hitting high fastballs. Pit fastballs up around the belt area. That one even higher, and he just blisters it down the left field line. Young last year against the Cincinnati Reds was just one for 15, and you could say, well, I'm sure he doesn't remember that. I think you'll tell me that's not the case. Guys remember when teams yeah, own them. Absolutely. So here's Kelly Johnson. Chris had a nice stop in Washington at four hits and 13 at bats and had a nice road trip hit over 300. 
And he is out at second. 0 1 the count to Kelly. Johnson, three hits in the Washington series. A double, a homer, a couple of walks as well. You see the infield. They are anticipating something to the right side. Johnson will try to get that runner to third. Look at this. Pitch away, pulls it, hugging the line, and it trickles back. Looked like a high changeup. That was a high changeup. You're right. Kelly was trying to pull it. He did pull it, but it just trickled foul. Arroyo began his career as a Pittsburgh Pirate, was their third round pick in 95. A little bit of time up through 02, pitched in Boston for the Red Sox. That's when a lot of you probably started to notice him a lot more. And he's been with the Reds. Where's the time gone? He's been a Red since 2006. He's just been around a while now. Accomplished musician. There's the drop down fastball. You called that earlier. And I, I never really understood, Darren. You were a right handed pitcher. Why you would drop down to a left handed hitter? I just think it's changing the line of sight. I think that's all that is. Well, you ask me, it changes your chances of success. Well, that's like putting it on a tee, like I said. Speaking of, on a tee, deep right field, out of here. Did it again, Kelly Johnson, or as we like to call him on this show, hard hitting Kelly Johnson. With his 19th home run of the year, the Diamondbacks lead it two to nothing. As a left-handed hitter, you love if a right-handed pitcher drops down sidearm on you because it is just gives you a great look. It's like putting it on a tee for you. Well. Well, anyway, it was teed up and it went a long, long ways off the bat of Kelly Johnson. We'll do our best to find you a center field look of that one because it did. You know, it's funny, as you were asking me the question, well, maybe once, not a bad idea, the element of surprise. And against a righty, I think it's much more effective, though. But the second time. It's as if Bronson was trying to prove to you that he could, in fact, do it. Well, it's it's a good weapon against right-handed hitters, but watch him drop down, and that ball just stays right on the plane, and down goes Kelly Johnson right in his nitro zone, way out of here. Justin Upton down the line. Gracie, I want to ask you something as I saw the replay there. And maybe we could marry both pitches together, regular speed. They're talking about it. I'm sure Ryan angles. Church said, I can't believe he dropped down on you. I'm wondering, was this second one a breaking ball? It was an attempted breaking ball, The yes. first one was a fastball. Fast I think he thought he'd trick him. So he thought, he's going to see my arm angle. I'll get him. I'll get him out front. Well, Kelly was ready for it. Oh, well, any left-hander is just so thankful. I said, I loved it. If, if, if a right-hander dropped down. You just, you just see the baseball so much better off a right-handed pitcher if they drop down sidearm. That's a good pitch there to the outside corner. Let's see if Arroyo does that tonight. If he drops down any more to left-handed hitters. Justin swings right through that one. And there are times when you muddle around with all sorts of soft stuff and arm angles at a little old fastball at the belt at about 88. Can be the pitch just what the doctor ordered defensively for the Reds. Knicks Stubbs Bruce in the outfield role in the multi gold glove winner at third Giannis at short Brandon Phillips and Joey Votto. Ryan Hennigan catches kind of first baseman is Joey Votto Gracie. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Let's put it this way. When you're. As dominant as he is offensively. You can be a rock over there at first base and be just fine, but he is he is more than good enough defensively over there. Is he going to win gold gloves? No, he's not, but he doesn't hurt you out there. A little bit better than, let's say, Big Adam Dunn. Well, a lot better, yes, defensively than, than Big Adam Dunn. 
Can't get enough of Big Adam Dunn, but he's defensively, he can't hang with Joey Vaughn. The 0-2. It was quite an honor. I was able to go and call the Aflac All-American game and uh, be a part of these young kids heading mm -hmm. into the future over the weekend. I just thought about Big Adam Dunn every day. Oh, yeah, you, miss, you, know, you miss three days of him. Okay. I miss two days of him. The 1-2. Change of pace down goes Adam LaRoche. That is strike three. Now that changeup had a split fingered like dive to him. It's a very well executed change up there. LaRoche way out in front. So now Miguel Montero. Now you got to see him in person. I know that I did. he was somewhat human. What uh, what do you think of Steven Strasburg? For our fans that might not have I thought, seen it on Sunday. I thought he was a lot of fun to watch. His fastball was fabulous. His, his stuff is fabulous, Darren. To me, looks like he's starting to get a little weary. Okay. Starting to get a little weary. Miguel Montero, high fly left field. But the big blast coming off that side arm slider. You can throw it once, says Kelly Johnson. You throw it twice. I'm on hitting Kelly Johnson. Goodbye. being critical of the other team and wanting to be their buddy before the game started. Brandon Phillips saying, I hate the St. Louis Cardinals and I'm not alone. And this is what ensued after. Baker and La Russa had words. The bench is empty. This preceded a three-game sweep and it was uh, well, a rivalry, a good old-fashioned rivalry. Good way to start things. Boys will be boys. Nothing wrong with that. One thing we do want to hope is our good buddy Jason LaRue. Let's hope he's okay. Yes, sir. He was at the wrong end of Johnny Cueto's spikes when he went to kicking people during that little dust up. Fast ball misses in. Two and one to count. Well, Brandon got it started. He said what he said. And right away the Cardinals backing up that they didn't like it. And I don't think Molina was looking for any problems, but he had a I think an understandable response hey, to I don't want to be your buddy. Don't, now. Act, don't don't tap me on my on my shin guards if if you if you supposed to hate me. Does that make sense? It makes all the sense in the world. Good pitch to the dangerous Bruce. Three and two the count. But Brandon Phillips, one of the really good guys in the game, a very good guy. He is an energy plus player, too. Mm -hmm. He's a very good player. He might have sensed a, a flatter level around his club trying to just spark things. 
Speaking of smart things, base hit right field for Bruce. Let's listen to Kirk Gibson, his thoughts on Brandon Phillips and then what followed. But Brandon did a, you know, it was a pretty good challenge. St. Louis stood up to it really good in that first round. I think it'll help the Reds grow. It's like they kind of found out, man. Like, I'm sure he will measure his words from now on. You know, like, I, I like Brandon Phillips. I respect him. I like the way he plays. And, uh, you know, I did a lot of stupid things as a player, so... It's okay, and you know what? His team, his team came behind. They they stuck up for him. That's a good deal. <coughs> so that's all. That's all good to me. There you go. Kirk Gibson saying it's all good to me. Yeah, I got no problem with it. That his team, but I got. I, but I also have no problem at all with Yadier Molina's reaction. Oh no, I, and neither did Gibby. Gibby went on to speak on the entire situation. Mm -hmm. He he didn't take any sides. Understood it. I think what he spoke of is that what he liked more than anything was both rosters came in support of the two players involved. Yeah. Huge team support. Yeah. Sometimes things like that just need to happen in baseball. But there's no bad blood between these two teams here tonight, so we should have a well-played, hard-fought game with bats and baseballs, not with fists. And Cueto spikes. You're upset about that, aren't you? One and two, the count. <laughs> On Ryan Hannigan. Oh, it's good to have you back, partner. Good to be back, my friend. Greg and I had a good time Sunday covering Strasburg. And I know you had a great time. It was in San Diego, it right? San covering Diego. the Aflac game. It's a tough assignment having to go to San Diego. I'm sure it was. I think you got to 78 one day. Swing and a miss. There's the changeup. So, look, we focused on his fastball, and he does throw a lot of them, but he has had some quality second and third pitches already. That's his swing and miss changeup. We've seen the one higher in the zone for the call strike. Now we see his put away two strike changeup. Just gone. Great pitch. And so now Drew Stubbs with a bat in his hands, leading the team. And stolen bases. He'll get out and get it going when he gets on there. 18 of them as the fastball is in. In the middle of a four game hitting streak right now. He can hit a ball a long, long ways. 15 home runs. Yeah, what a July the 4th he had. They didn't need fireworks. He provided them in Chicago. Three homers in a game. And he just got a fastball blown right by him for strike one. Kind of runs hot and cold. Like a lot of young players do. But they call him Big Tex. Out of Atlanta in Texas. One and one to count to Stubbs. Boy, an awkward swing. It's a strike over the inside corner. One and two the count. That's not his nickname. Two to nothing, Arizona leads it. But I'm sure he has a good one. The one, two, there's, yes. now there's the fastball you explained to us in the open. That one right there. The one where he gets the chases up around the letters, right up around Cincinnati on his chest. And that's just a lot to catch up with, and that means you have got late life on your fastball. Miguel Montero wanted it high in the zone. That's exactly where Daniel Hudson put it. Four strikeouts already now for the young right hand. And so the young man who attended the University of Texas Goes down on strikes. As that one is called low to Paul Yanish. Find out what Stubbs' nickname actually is. I'm sure we'll find out tomorrow. Probably in Big Tex. Popped Boy, up. Ate him up with a fastball in there. Jerry Lane behind the plate here this evening. Veteran umpire. Got an opportunity to do a segment this afternoon Darren you want a bit of a round talk, table talk, talking about uh, umpiring and uh, and the need or lack of need for replay and I think that's a that's a subject that a lot of people are talking about 
mm -hmm. these days, you mm -hmm. know, and of course, ever since the ill-fated Armando Galarraga, you know, perfect game that wasn't. That's yeah, still still a big subject about replay and whatnot. And of the four guys that were talking, and one was a former umpire, Drew Coble, former American League umpire. I was the only guy that said, nope, we don't need any more replay. It's it's good the way it is. We've got great umpires that are very well trained that do a great job. And everybody else said, nope, Grace, you're crazy. We need, we've got the technology. We need more replay. How do you feel about it? Well, it's very similar to, I support you, first of all, agree with you 100%. Thank you. But and was, that's not what I'm looking for in well, this Well, there situation. was a golf tournament in Wisconsin in which a gentleman basically lost a chance to win it because right there were umpires, right there were officials. He was supposed to make the call. They let him know. Human beings help to decide the PGA Championship. Human beings can decide baseball. Good for you. You didn't know where you can put the cameras. Sun sets, and I know our, a lot of parts around Arizona. Be safe, folks. I know yeah. monsoon, some heavy rains. So but, be careful, folks. But it is perfect inside here. And get but, inside. Yeah, Find so, your way yeah, inside. So if you're around town, come on down to the ballpark. Yeah, we'd love to have you down here. Hope to see you on this home stand. We missed you. Whether it was stopping off in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, for 11 days, as that one is up and in to Mark Reynolds. One and one the count. Saw him pitched in a lot earlier this year. We also saw him hit in the helmet on the recent home stand. And he digs right back in there and he's ready to go. Hot shot out to third. Scott Rowland is there to make the play for the out. Well, uh, the health and wealth raffle is, is a great cause, and they have stepped up to sponsor our key to the game. And uh, well, right. this comes from Mike Hawk. He uh, he joined us on on Twitter, he joined us on uh, on the account there, Fox Sports Arizona's account. Spoiler alert! Oh, yeah, what what about it? Like, is that like a like a hurricane warning or a tornado warning or something like an alert? What are we talking about? Spoiler alert. Well, you know, Cincinnati, Colorado, San Diego, San Francisco. That one is a shot and it's foul. Then San Diego. You know, skip Houston. Then San Francisco, Colorado, Cincinnati, Colorado, San Francisco. All teams that, well, I guess are looking to be spoiler. Hmm. Ah. Well, I gotta 
can't live with myself without saying this, but that's that's a terrible key to the game. Spoiler alert. Come on, we can do a little better than that, can't well, we? We actually tried to do a little better. It, it says word for word, playing spoiler is the key to the game. So we tried to jazz it up a little bit. That oh, didn't work. Three and two, the count to Stephen Drew. So you folks that join us on Fox Sports AZ on, uh, I guess it's Twitter. I have a hard time following how all of this works. You, you join us on there and just a real disappointing night for you. Yes, that's a breaking ball and a strike over the outside corner. But don't give up. Keep trying. Let's let's have some better ones because because boy, there's room to get better. And can anyone else maybe visit and try, please? As Drew goes down on strikes, good looking breaking ball over the outside corner. I was disappointed when Gracie shared with us that there probably wouldn't be a Donnybrook in tonight's ball game. Well, I know you're you're still about, very upset about that. Breaking I ball. I know how you get missed away, but that pales in comparison to the level of disappointment as we open back up. It was an old tradition from a year ago, opening yeah, the, key the key to the game to the, the fans. It was fun. You know, great creative wordsmiths out there coming up with fun things to tie in using. Man, we had some great ones too, along with some some rotten ones. Well, current events they would use. Yeah. Hard lifts that one in the left field. Nix goes back to the track, but he's got room. But tonight, with fans looking on, Bronson Arroyo working on the mound, you folks that joined us, you ought to be embarrassed. <laughs>Far and really impressive uh, so far as a Diamondback looking to go four and zero since coming over in the trade. Now, uh, impressing Diamondbacks fans, their first look at him, but this is actually something Justin Upton has seen for quite a few years. Take a look back when the two were 13; they were on a traveling team together in Virginia. There's Daniel Hudson next to next to Justin Upton, and I was talking to Justin earlier uh, in the day about Daniel Hudson. He said he was a soft thrower back then; he could always pitch, but but uh, Upton was shocked. When looking at a scouting report in spring training, it said Daniel Hudson threw 90 to 95 miles an hour. I guess proof, guys, that at 13 years old, you don't need to be a flamethrower to be a big league pitcher one day. No, very few are. And the fact that he was on an all-star team, and thank you, Mark, throwing strikes. He was doing something right. And doing something right and probably getting ready to sprout to six feet, five inches tall. Did and you see how tall Justin was? <laughs> yes. Very tall. I mean, Justin still is a big drink of water compared to most. Yeah, I mean, but Justin was towering over the other children. I mean, I mean that's, like, that's gracious. like playing baseball with Kareem. See Manny Upton in the, the back row. Sam Hudson, Daniel's dad, in the back row as well. 
Swing and a miss on a slider. That one is about a C plus if you were to grade it, but against the pitcher, it gets the out. That's exactly right. That's four strikeouts in a row now for Daniel Hudson. Going with the off speed there to get Bronson Arroyo, which I can promise you when Daniel Hudson steps into the box, he's going to see some breaking balls from Arroyo now. All right, Brandon Phillips marks out his territory. He singled in the first inning, digs into the box, and hops out ready to go. Brandon's getting an earful from a fan beyond the D backs dugout. Tell him to get in the box as the changeup dives down and in. That's our buddy. He's out here giving the other team heck all the time. He's big league. 0 oh and 1 the count. Change up is low. 1 and 1. Never swears. Nah, I was just going Never to point swears. that out. He keeps it's always it clean. clean. Now, is he giving it to him? You bet you he is. But he doesn't use any language that's going to offend anybody. And he's a Diamondback diehard. One and two, the count. Tried to get him to chase upstairs, nothing doing. Two and two, the count. Back to the screen it goes, so we will do it again. An all-star for the first time this year, Brandon Phillips. He has already gone over 135 hits, 25 doubles, 10 homers, 80 runs, 10 stolen bases. The only player to reach all of those milestones. And put them together in his stat line as he hangs around. See what he has done in his major league career. 23 year old right hander. On two and two. A little reach and just a piece of that one as he fouls it off. Putting a pretty good at bat on Daniel Hudson here. You surprised? Well, it's just the kind of player he is. He's, he's a guy that gets big hits. Got some thunder in his bat with 14 home runs. The right hander out of Old Dominion wheels and deals on 2 2. He drilled it. Ouch. And did he get the bat? No, I think it got him. I don't think there's any question. Is that late life diving up? Right up. Into those hands. So you get some right around the forearm area, right on that wristband. Nope, right on the elbow. Oh he almost, it almost ricocheted and got him right in the chops. So Phillips, although painful, it, it was very close to being much worse. When you get a young pitcher who has that jump, you've seen lefty swing and miss, and it's almost in the other batter's box. And you get a hit or aggressively trying to dive in. It's a dangerous proposition. No, good for Brandon Phillips. He just went to first base, didn't act the fool. No. And you hate to miss up there as a pitcher. He had no intent at all. Doesn't make it okay. You got to be careful missing yeah, up there. Still hurts. You just can't do it. One and oh, the count to Lance Nix. Want to come and talk about it. I think Montero wants to make sure he's okay. And he's throwing strikes. I know you missed badly with one. That's him talking to himself. Well, last time out at Milwaukee, he went seven innings, gave up two runs, struck out nine. It was an 8-2 win. He had a couple of runs batted in as well, emptying the bases. With a double. 
Before that, seven and two thirds, one run against the San Diego Padres as that one is in. He has gone eight, seven and two thirds, and seven in starting his D backs career, three and oh. Oh, what a change up on 2 0. Oh. Nix was dialing up, trying to hit it a long ways. He was looking for a fastball, though. Look at Hudson pull the string way out in front. What a pitch. Got his fastball that time. Took the same rip, but he came up empty. Remember that pitch. That was his pitch. He can take a rip. From that left side reminds me of old Diamondback now overseas in Japan. Who's Josh that? Weitzel. Oh boy. That did kind of remind me of Weitzel. Boy could he take a rip at it. I think you've deemed it a mighty rip and you are right on. Yeah. Another one blows it right by him. Nix is done. Seven strikeouts. And right underneath the hands, beautifully executed. Nothing Nix can do. Well, that is just a perfectly executed fastball in Darren Sutton. That was pretty. You're going to take these big rips at me. I'm not going to back off. I'm still going to use my fastball. Change up with some run to it away to Joey Votto. You talk about stocking things up. And doing so at first base, there are some good one in the National League this year, let alone three MVP candidates at the position alone. As that one is fouled off, Southwest.com, the best National League MVP candidate at first, in order to win the ultimate fan experience, sex to 36929. Your vote, Gracie, for A, B, or C, Votto, Pujols, or Adrian Gonzalez. Right now, I would say Votto, just because. It's always out with Pujols. Right. You know, there's a slider that he got away with up around Bell Tide, Darren. That's the one. same slider he struck him out with. So what does he throw? Trying to come in with the fastball. Oh, he just missed. Just missed. A little bit up, correct? I'm guessing up, yeah. He has been more than forthright Daniel Hudson in coming here to Arizona about his shortcomings, about adjusting time in, time out. Yes. Ball. Wow, mercy. That is eight strikeouts already in the third for Daniel Hudson. I didn't see this from Steven Strasburg Sunday.
Bronson Arroyo goes back to work, breaking ball away, as predicted by Mark Grace to Daniel Hudson. Well, he'll see a couple more before the ABs over. Mark McClune, Mark Grace, Darren Sutton, and you trust that you are having a good week early in this week, being safe, getting out of the rain. Change up, fly ball, center field. Easy chance for Drew Stubbs. And Hudson already two for ten with five RBIs. Base is clearing double in his last time in Milwaukee against the Brewers. So Hudson, when he was picked, a fifth round pick a couple of years back out of Old Dominion. And we've been talking about with a very busy day yesterday, the Diamondbacks adding three players that were drafted. Guys that were signed, as they like to say, over slot. Signing for more than because they thought they were going to play college baseball or football. The question is this for all of you folks out there. Do you anticipate changes in the amateur draft system and the way things are compensated in the next couple of years? And please explain as you log on to Twitter.com, Fox Sports AZ. I I'm going to weigh my way out of that. One. That's just a little too complicated for me. Now let me simplify what I was thinking. And I'll be as simple and maybe this will help the folks at home. You're drafted and you get an opportunity to play professional baseball understanding that you hope to you know sign for as much as you can sign for. I have no problem with that. And when you are drafted and you are picked you have until yesterday to work out your contract. So you've essentially lost your first season. Yeah. And, and we wish these gentlemen good luck. We hope they're here soon. But the way baseball has set it up is that one is swung right through. That's a changeup at strike three. It has become a system where a lot of the folks that advise the players, the agents, they wait until midnight and a flurry of players signed yesterday. More than I can ever remember. Well, then, then that's the player's fault. Because the final decision is the players, or maybe if it's a high school kid, the, the player and maybe their parents. But the agent is to advise. He is not making the decision. He's giving advice, but the final decision is the players. And you know, for if if, if that player is willing to sit out a half a year or whatever it is, then and, and that's a year of his development. Well. Got him, nobody but himself to blame. Very interesting. Arizona presents D-backs baseball brought to you by Amway Global, where positivity powers our people, products, and businesses. By Low Basin and by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far.
Got Roland digs in, ready to go. Eight of the first nine outs, strikeouts for Daniel Hudson as the changeup bounces. 1 0 the count, and to quickly wrap up the thought, as I know you folks might have some thoughts, we want to congratulate Blake Perry, Tyler Green, and Ty Linton, and wish them best of luck in their professional careers. As Linton, kind of the, the high side guy out of the 14th round, was on his way to play football and baseball at the University of North Carolina. He instead is going to be a member of the Diamondbacks, so hopefully it works out for these young men. The 1 1. Up and in, 2 and 1 the count. It is interesting, though, in last season, 57 players drafted in the first 10 rounds were unsigned on deadline day. Yesterday, that total was at 79, as that one is fouled off. And these are the gentlemen that Blake Perry, the Pendleton School in Florida, but originally from Kentucky, Tyler Green, and Ty Linton. We keep an eye on all three and wish them best of luck. Bear Laux did not sign with the Diamondbacks. As reported injuries and such to follow, deemed that they would part their ways and he'll become a free agent. Scott Rowland with a base hit. And that's about so, all they're saying about it, literally. I mean, they, they, they've come to some sort of an agreement and. Failed a physical, is that correct? I guess. There is literally no comment, period. I mean, it just doesn't, it's not going to happen. So no big thunder coming to Arizona. No. Bouncing ball right there at the belt. Morrell stares. One and double play. Took him a moment, pulled himself together as he played it right at the belt, as we talked about. And a fine play by a great defensive first baseman. Just Taylor made one hop, like you said. Belt tie, perfect feed there to Stephen Drew, and he does the rest. Two quick outs. He's realized I don't have to strike everybody out. I can roll up a double play ball once in a while. I would agree. He can become a little bit more economical with regard to that pinch count, which is at 61. That's the thing about having eight strikeouts. That's at least 24 pitches right there that are strikes that haven't been put in play. I mean, that's doing it. Let me cap it, Gracie, on the draft as LaRoche digs it. I know you once knew a manager that said, with regard to the draft and all those players, well, just let me know when they get here. I like that. <laughs> Wee wee wee. All right, folks, back here for the bottom of the fourth inning. Our trivia question, I'm told it's a good one, hopefully much better than our key to the game. Name the Reds <laughs> one through four hitters in their last playoff series. That, of course, was 1995 against the Atlanta Braves. 
one through four. Justin Upton pops that one to the right side. The young man will see it reach the seats. And is that a possible hint? Good chance. Oh, and one the count. Good change up there from Arroyo. What do you think of that trivia question? Well, it reminded me a lot of our key to the game. It's one of the worst of the year. <laughs> the world. The 0 2. I <laughs> fouled off at the plate. We'll do it again. Well, I'll do I'll do respect to the Cincinnati Reds in that 1995 <laughs> series. Well, by the way, who the, cares? The team they played won the World Series. <laughs> They, yeah. Now, if it was their World Series team that beat the Oakland Athletics in the World Series, <laughs> yeah, but how about that special 95 team? What? I've got something for you here. You talked about dropping down against the lefty. It's a different look dropping down against the righty, isn't oh, absolutely. it? Absolutely. Watch this ball just run right in and just jam, Justin. It's a whole different story. It's a good weapon against a right-handed hitter. But against a lefty, you're just asking for it. That's the only mistake he's made so far. And for extra credit, who batted eighth for the Reds in 1993? <laughs> well, I'll never forget that 95 squad. Like, come on, man. Oh, boy. Funny times. Good to have you back, Darren. The 1 0 is a breaking ball, is high. 2 0, the count's good to be back home. Back home with my baseball family, my family. It's good to be back. Road trips, we love them. Necessary evils, but we like being at home. Bouncing ball, tried to pull a pitch down and away. It's gobbled up, and in time for the out. First three or first two hitters of the game, double homer. Since then, nothing. Speaking of welcoming somebody back home, good to have Brian Price yeah, back in the house. He's a good man and a good pitching coach, in Brian Price. Cincinnati Reds very fortunate to have him and did some good work here let us never forget in 2007 and we won't ask you to name everyone in the starting lineup for the Diamondbacks you do know that he was the pitching coach though folks he got the best out of that bullpen Paul Lassard former trainer here for those championship teams one of my favorite people in the world Paul Lassard Oh, and on the count to Miguel Montero, just staying away, away. And again. Yeah, some good baseball people. Chris, Chris Spire, Spire over yes. there. Another great coach. The 1-1. One, one. That one is low and inside. Dusty Baker was saying before the game the advice he gives his players. He said, you know, I don't have to give him a lot. Simply put, it's the same game. You know, it's been the same game. These guys have all played on all-star teams and big games throughout their lives. They, they have been under pressure. The 2-1. Base hit. Trying to go away with the changeup. Miggy just committed to pulling it, but to the big part of the field. So Miguel Montero reaches. Baker saying this is a goal we literally discussed in spring training at length. Oh, and here they are. Stepping off. He's trying to lock everyone down there, get some concrete in the shoes of Reynolds and Montero, though Miggy's not going anywhere. Two to nothing. The Diamondbacks lead it. And a home run by Kelly Johnson in the first inning. No one won the count. Mark was just one for 10 in Washington and only four for 25 on the road trip, a 160 clip. 
with a homer, just one RBI on that road trip. As that one is away. One and one to count. How about a big fat offensive homestand for the slugger? It'd be good to see. In his moments, Gracie, they have come, but he has not been quite the same hitter since he was hit. Hit right up there I don't in the think helmet. There's any question? That takes a little while. And Arroyo knew it, pitched him high and tight in that first at bat. Not to hit him, but pitched him in. You could say that's cruel. Arroyo would tell you that's part of the game. Well, he has to pitch in in order to open up that breaking ball in the outer part, outer portion of the plate. That fastball dips low. Three and one. His average fastball is 88 miles an hour this year. Those are about four out of every 10 pitches. He's a ground ball pitcher. More so this year than over the last couple of years in his career. That's probably a ticket to his success. Reynolds fouls it right back. Had him out front on the change. In. Yeah, that. That was one of those I think Mark was on. He might have been out in front, but I think that bat was right where he wanted. He fouled it straight back. The hitter's body language will usually tell you whether he just missed one or whether he was fooled. Runner was on the move. That's ball four. Complete your 2010 bobblehead collection on Saturday, September 4th when the D backs take on the Astros. The first 15,000 fans will get a Miguel Montero bobblehead. Courtesy of Subway, call 602 462 4794 for tickets or log on to dbacks.com slash giveaways. Now that's a big league bobblehead right there. Don't you think? I do. It comes with a mask as well, the catcher's mask. It does? Oh, yeah. Put it on, take it off, just don't lose it. That pitch is a high breaking ball. 1 0 the count. You remember a couple of days back, folks, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you see Montero on, you see Reynolds on, but it was the quartet of LaRoche, Montero, Reynolds, and Drew that all homered in succession. Four in a row. First time it ever happened in Diamondbacks history. That breaking ball is high. It happened for just the seventh time in Major League Baseball history. Drew went on to Washington and went three for 11 in the stop in D.C. He's in the middle of a five game hitting streak. Hitters count. No surprise he pitched backwards on a hitters That's count. That's a is good it? breaking ball right in the outside corner there on a 2 0 pitch, and that one just froze Stephen Drew. Bouncing ball to the right side on the backhand. Makes the play out in front of him. Instead of worrying about the bag. And he guns down Mark Reynolds. Votto with a fine play. The inning comes to an end.
That young man was just a glimmer in his dad's eyes in 1995. <laughs> but I know dad's still telling his son about that 1995 club when well, Jerome Walton. is four hitters. Uh, how about Thomas Howard? And then Barry Larkin, Ron Gant, and Reggie Sanders. Well, at least there was a sliver of Diamondback history there with Reggie Sanders. What a terrible question. Guys in the truck, whose whose question was that? Oh, really? No. No, I am man. told. And I am told. No, no. I'm told it's Jason Lewis, our producer. <laughs> Is that Jason? Yes, J. Lou. Wow. Another vacation didn't do him any bit any better, did it? Line drive, base hit, left field. Drew Stubbs. It stays in the ballpark. As he reaches. If you're joining us a little bit late, it was eight of the first nine batters, eight of the first nine that were struck out by Hudson. And then he gave up a single, a double play, then a ground out. Run on the move, fair ball. Down the line, it goes and into the corner. Puffin and a puffin out front. Para fires to the cutoff man. So the Reds are in business. Two to one is the score. Well, oh, Dusty plays hit and run, and boy, does it pay off. Nice job there by Janish. Taking a pitch and rifling it down the left field line with the runner on the move. He's going to score easily. And I love the running game. Great stuff. Looks like we're going to have an appeal play of some kind here at third base. Wondering maybe if Stubbs had missed third. Let's see. He's out. Oh, they say he missed it. It was made by Jerry Lane from behind home plate. Jerry Lane walked out. Now, talking about umpires, Estabrook Gracie went out to be a part of the call, so Lane was on it. Let's see. Does he miss it? It's tough to tell from that angle. If he did get it, he didn't get much of it. Boy, you rarely see that call. But Jerry Lane, because the third base umpire had to go down the line with the double, and there's no, and you can tell Stubbs knows he missed it. There's no argument at all. Boy, what a huge break for the Diamondbacks. This should tell something. Boy, not as much, does it? We're trying every angle we can find in the truck. Well, good for the Diamondbacks for giving it a look. Doesn't cost you anything to appeal. As that one is low. Pickoff throw. And nearly an errant throw. Let's take a look. Jerry Lane, the home plate umpire, had to make the call because you see Mike Esterbrook is out there down the line. So the home plate umpire had the call. Well, it doesn't look like he got it to me, Dan. It looks to me like Jerry Lane got that call right. I think he missed it. High fly ball center field. Young's got to go and look for that baseball. He's got it. Tagging and heading to third to the area in question. We're continuing to look for every angle we can find. I mean, if he did hit third, boy, just if he got it, then I'm not seeing it. it's that close. What do you think? If he got it, it was with the very side of his foot as it swept against it. And a manager telling his club, hey, go give it a look out there. I need to know. If it was giving, maybe Mark Reynolds. You're taught as a, as a first baseman, third baseman, or you're, you're taught to watch to see if he hits the bag. And if he doesn't, you appeal it. We'll find out more whether it was Gibby that saw it or whether maybe it was Mark Reynolds himself that saw it. Reynolds gets the put out on that play, correct? Sure. I believe so. 
I, I don't know how you score that, that, to be play. honest with you. The put out is 1 5, pitcher to third baseman. Gas. Strike two. Giannis gets credit for a double. Stubbs out on the appeal. 1 5, so Reynolds does get the put out. Missed his spot. He wanted it up, but still enough life on it. It's fouled back. Great catch, by the way, Gracie, on the rotation, the communication, the work by these umpires. And that's, but we were wondering why the home plate umpire was making the call. You saw because the third base umpire, yes, was down the line. Boy, what a huge break for the Diamondbacks. I still think that man got that call right. They said he missed the base because of that. It is still a shutout right there. Gary Lane saying that Stubbs missed the bag as he went by. Run taken off the scoreboard. And Daniel Hudson responds accordingly and does a nice job. Works right through the inning. As was pointed out by Gracie on the replay. Estabrook went out. He had his job in the outfield. He had to see if the ball, in fact, would be caught where the ball would head. If it heads into the corner, fair or foul. All of the things that go along with it as Estabrook looks now and calls foul. Going to the count. But Grace, you were telling me you were part of a round table earlier today, and folks were really banging the drum for more and more replay. Or it drives that one into right center field. Well, he went up and got it. Played nicely out there by Stubbs, but Arano Parr is still in with a stand up double. Good to see for Parra. His 12th double of the year, slugging below 400. Extra base hit certainly will help that. Another high fastball. Clark drives it into the right center gap and once again kind of dropping down to a left handed hitter, Darren. I, I think I'm going to ask Joe Borowski about that in the post game show. As a right handed pitcher, did he ever drop down to left handed hitters? Because I think. I think you're just asking for it if you do. But I want to hear a pitcher's perspective. It'll be interesting to see what he has to say. By the way, when Joe joins us in the postgame show, after Joe left saying hello to one of his old managers and Dusty Baker. Right. Dusty Baker said clearly, 
This is one of the reasons I do the job, to see my old players stop by and say hello, of course. pay their respects. That means a lot to Baker. Kind of an old school thought there is that one is bunted right through. Dusty mentioning, he said Joe Borowski stopped by, Mike Remlinger is stopping by tomorrow, and Ellis Burks is stopping by on Thursday. He said it makes my day to see one of my old players doing well. Well, it makes a manager happy too that that guys still come back and say hello. Daniel Hudson might need to work on the bunting a little bit. But he's still got an opportunity to get him over. Quest high speed internet, high speed pitch. Royo 90, Hudson 95. Breaking ball waves right through it. That's strike three. Hey, by the way, we had an interesting moment. One of our Golden Glovers, Del Webb Golden Glovers. It was Gordy Nygaard down the left field line. Well, Gordy down there, it's tough and upgrades you to make plays. Right. But how about just re I mean, really step up to in front of everyone while you're in between innings making those fine plays. Get right there on your knee and say, will you, Miss Marianne, marry me? And she said yes. Holy mackerel. How about that? Nice going, folks. Congratulations and best of luck. Ah, oh, we lead the league in love, Darren Sutton. Come on out and get hitched, folks. <laughs> He's, uh, I think, still a little stunned. Gordy's got his eyes on the on yeah, the game, well, though. He can't. He might have to save somebody from a line drive. That's great stuff. He was totally surprised. The whole kiss cam situation shown out here on the board. And all of a sudden, there he was on his knee on the dirt. Owen won the count. Popped up. Shallow right. Coming on is Bruce instead going back to make the play very easily is Brandon Phillips. Smiles infectious, isn't it? Yeah, he's a good guy. Very good player. Just doesn't like the Cardinals. No. I think he likes them a little bit less now. I wouldn't blame him. They're in a dogfight with the Cardinals. I was going to say, let's have a good old fashioned pennant race. We've got a lot of exciting baseball coming up all over the divisions and the leagues. The only thing that's really pretty much in the bag would be, I would say, the Texas Rangers in the in the American League West. They are making some kind of run. And I think you're right. But the National League West, what? Nice dogfight right now between San Francisco and San Diego. You just saw the the Central Division and the. National League between the Cardinals and Reds. National League East, Atlanta right back in championship mode. They're fighting it out with the Phillies. There's the West you're talking about. Wow. That is high. That is ball four. So that great key to the game we had earlier, the health and wealth raffle. Spoiler alert. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't a great key to the game at all, Darren. It was, it was really, we're bringing it back in a, uh, I just, words can't describe my disappointment. Well, Cincinnati's coming up, San Diego, San Francisco on the road, then San Diego at home, San Francisco at home, Cincinnati for four on the road. San Francisco on the road, so you know, a chance to do some damage. Upton trying to do some damage, but he's jammed by that one. Through five, the Diamondbacks two, the Reds nothing.
Brad Steinke. All night long, we've been asking you to weigh into our Twitter account. Tonight's topic, what changes do you think are in store for the Major League Baseball's amateur draft? And we've got at Mark R 72 says, do you think MLB should be more like the NBA and have a slot system for draft pick? Guys, we'll send it back to you, and, and maybe that new collective bargaining agreement will have that because certainly uh, a lot of guys sign late and they get a lot of money, not a lot of... Uh, comparisons right there. We'll send it back to you. It's our weigh-in topic of the night. Good stuff, Brad. Looking forward to people's thoughts. And uh, certainly that is an idea that has been bantied about because a lot of players were rewarded for waiting till the very last minute and giving up an entire, just about an entire pro season. They were rewarded. The system rewarded them for that financially anyway. We'll see if it rewards them throughout their careers. Owen won the count. To Lance Nix, a changeup, it's strike one, and it's, another. It's one of those things, Darren. It's just, it's, it's hard. You know, how much can you change because the draft is right in the middle of, of these these young men's seasons. So you know, they they don't have like football or basketball where they have a scouting combine. That one's ripped down the right field line for a base hit. Well, maybe they should. I mean, if you are drafting a player and suddenly you find out things medically after you've drafted him with a first-round pick that you didn't know existed, maybe there should be a combine. When? When do you do it? Well, if you're done playing the College World Series, I mean, high school seasons are over in June. Yeah, but and I would say more to the College World I Series. I would say many, 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 many more kids are drafted out of college, aren't they, than high school? Sure enough, the college season. The very best teams in the country, their season's end like the first week of June. The very best teams in the country at the CWS. I, I, you know, I just don't know what what you can do because, you know, also, who's to say uh, the who's to say goes to the goes to the combine? How, how do you know you're going to be drafted? It's it's an inexact science, that's for sure. It's very inexact. Two and zero, oh, the count. Yeah, usually the actual draft is right in the middle of the College World Series. A couple of days in, then there's the draft. And all of it goes on at the very first week of June. Two and on the count to Joey Votto. <laughs> Giving himself the business. Southwest Airlines text poll. So far, you have voted for Albert Pujols. Best National League MVP candidate at first to base. And don't forget, if you join us with your vote, become eligible to win the ultimate fan experience. Catch a ball game, everything taken care of at the brand new Target Field. And also on that same trip, Fenway Park. Yeah, be careful. That first step's a doozy. Dead same sit. <laughs> two and two, the count. The Reds have not been able to really cash in offensively. The leadoff batter for the Reds has been on in five of six innings. And maybe they do here. Let's see. Base hit for Votto. Doesn't try to do too much. Just a line drive right back where it came from. That pitch count is at 82 for the right-hander. Again, really for the first time. Not really the second time. Daniel Hudson's got a little work to do. First two reds aboard. He gets to a high fastball there and just rifles it back into center field. That's pretty hitty. Seven-time gold glover. Scott Rowland goes the other way, lets it travel. Upton have to play it on a backhand. That means the run will come on down. Runners are on first and third. He saw a fastball. He let it travel deep into his stance instead of trying to do too much, and it was done moving by the time he attacked. It. Here comes this offense. And here comes the pitching coach for the Diamondbacks. That fastball in the middle of the plate, and like you said, he lets it travel and just drives it, rifles it the other way. A lot like Andrew Jones used to do. And now all of a sudden, 
not only are the Diamondbacks trying to keep the lead, they're, they're trying to keep the Cincinnati Reds from having a big number on the board. You talk about this Reds offense. 4.9 runs per game. A 271 average. This season ranking tops in both in the National League. 132 home runs. By the way, the Diamondbacks, the most runs per game allowed as a pitching step. So it's a dangerous combination. I don't know if Andrew Jones let a ball travel deep in his life. He did sit on that one a while, didn't you? Here's Jay Bruce. Fastball. That was an angry fastball. I think, I think you're right on Ooh. that one. Boy, he needs to strike out something fierce. And that was his best fastball of the evening. He got 95 there. He sure did. And that was beautifully placed on the inside part of the plate. Reynolds in at third, even with the bag. Middle of the infield back. And a slider. Good one. It's down. Didn't get it for a strike, but you don't mind missing there. Outfield showing a little bit of a sign to pull for Bruce. 11 home runs, 46 RBIs this year. As he pulls that one, LaRoche looking to get two. He just got it. That'll tie up the ball game. Well, you've got a choice there if you're Adam LaRoche. Do you come to the plate? And get one out and keep the lead, but leave runners on first and second, or maybe even more. Or you turn the double play, the game is tied, but now really the threat is over. He chose to turn the double play and count on his offense to do something on its own. Boyer in the bullpen starting to go to work. A couple of days back for the first time in a long time, and I mean a long time. Diamondbacks bullpen gave up a couple of runs, but they right now are singing a new tune lately, and it's a successful one. And there you have it. Would have thought we'd ever be talking about anything like that, and it's a credit to them. As that one is a high bouncer to Reynolds. Keep those feet moving. He didn't, so he throws it in the dirt. But right there to dig it is Adam LaRoche. Oh, Roche. Third baseman's best friend, two to two. Summary is brought to you by Blimpy Daniel Hudson. Eight of the first nine he faced. That's right, eight of the first nine. Went down via strikeout, a sidearm breaking ball. Diving down and in and hard hitting Kelly Johnson with a homer until the fifth. When the Reds did some damage, or so they thought. The ball rolls into the corner. Stubbs on his way. Come on down. Oh, there's a run on the scoreboard. But after further review, they appeal. 
Jerry Lane says he missed it from behind home plate as he went out to pick up for his partner Mike Estabrook. Now the Reds did score a couple of runs in the sixth inning. That changes the story quite a bit. 2-2, two -two, that's where we stand. As LaRoche way out front of an off-speed hit. Hit that one off the end of the bat by queuing it. So had him fooled badly there to start things out. Ross Arroyo has been fabulous since the first two batters of the game. After two batters, it was two to nothing. Diamondbacks only have four hits, only two since the first two batters. So he has done a great job of keeping his ball club in the ball game. Arroyo, in his last six road starts, seven and a third innings pitch per start, and he already have 1.6. Opponents hitting just 178 against him. The salty veteran has been great. And what a better place to succeed than on the road. Mm -hmm. You talk about picking up your team. Independent race. Ian. 2 0 oh, the count. On deck, watching that one sail into the seats. You know, I'd like to say for Chris Young and Justin Upton, Miguel Montero, Mark Reynolds, Stephen Drew, that playing a team like this in the Cincinnati Reds, and getting a chance to see what they're going through would be a great experience. But they've been through this, and these aren't kids anymore. And now I think just playing in games again, where you have some energy, a team playing for something, certainly you hope you. You find it within yourself, but all the players I mentioned, they've been in pennant races. It was a couple of years back. It's just been a while. Breaking ball, high drive down the line. And it's a foul ball, a long foul ball. Goodness. That was out there in like big Adam Dunn territory. It was Adam Dunn territory. Our folks out there, all of our fine security folks who were out there when. We used to hold the redhead section out there. Oh, that was a fun time. Missed those days. This time he goes the other way, high fly to left center field. And that one is put away in center field by Drew Stubbs. I'm told an Amica insurance hit zone is on its way for Mark Reynolds. Are really nice. Oh, I in love these. with Amica insurance now. We love Amica Insurance, and certainly we think you should too. Give him a chance. I, check him out online. But I can't believe that that sees most of the pitches like away. That's rare. Yeah, looking forward to maybe a maybe a spray chart next year. You know where guys hit to different parts of the ballpark. Is that one is pulled? It's a base hit left field. You know, you might ask yourself, maybe Amica would be interested in sponsoring something not valid. Hey, now look we're talking. That. I mean, hits like by direction. Chart. Yeah, you know, Mark, now that's his 43rd hit to left. Center, he uses the big part down. Doesn't get many base hits to right field, Gracie. Not many at all. Now that's worth, that's worth sponsoring right there. I like it. You just know me, I'm all in. Just that we've learned everyone's pitched down and away. Every hitter. Steven Drew lifts that one. And there to make the play for the out is Lance Nix. Sprayed that over to the left side. He did, the other way.
Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Grab your bag. It is on Blimpy. Try the new lighter stuff menu with six healthy choices under 400 calories. Quest High Speed Internet. Blazing fast speeds that won't burn up your wallet. Your Valley Hyundai dealers. Time for the seventh inning stretch. Your dollars. Hyundai. Now the most fuel efficient car maker in America. Visit Valley Hyundai Dealers. Dot com. Right back to work with the slider to Drew Stubbs. That one is fouled off. And into the seats it goes. Mark McLuhan, Mark Grace, Darren Sutton, and you. And we trust to this point you're having a great night. Diamondbacks with Kelly Johnson's big home run early in the ball game. That's where they got things going. But as Gracie pointed out earlier, that's been about it since. Just missed. You got to think umpires anticipate occasion. Oh yeah, when you stand up like that, yeah, you're you're blocking the umpire's sight. Wants it up there again. That just re that settles it. When you swing and miss, that's ten strikeouts now for the young right-hander. And that's a career high. Let's take a look at the off-speed stuff, Gracie. Part of our Chaz Roberts cool play. We know about the fastball. That good change up as well. That's a slider to strike out Scott Rowland. That's a change up there. Slider. And he's got all the weapons, no question, but still for me, the best weapon is that good fastball. A career high 10 strikeouts. How about that thing of beauty right on the outside corner, knee high? Been a joy to watch him work in Arizona and for Arizona. Uh oh, he hung a slider. Belted. Deep left. Out of here. He hung a slider right at the belt and Paul Yanish, who already had doubled down the line, homers. And now the Reds lead it three to two. You can see the disgust. Yeah, hits his face. Yadish hammers a hanging slider. This thing just spins. Oh dear. Hudson knew it when he threw it. Oh boy, that's just a cement mixer. Belt high. And credit Yadish. He hit it. Three to two the score as that one is away. Fourth home run of the year by Yanish. One and one the count. Outside. Let's see, 99 pitches for the right hander. Looking to get him through this seventh inning. Bullpen in action, but kind of slowly moving. Jordan Norberto starting to play catch. See if there's a play here. Adam knows it well, that area code. And again, he holds on to the baseball. A fabulous play by the Diamondbacks' first baseman. That's the third time this year he's done just that. Race is right over. As you said, he's starting to get familiar with that territory, and he just makes a beautiful play, sticks that right paw out, bangs into the fence it's about hip high and if you go over the top there that's a long fall fortunately he stays right there and makes a big play great look there on Foxmo really slowing things down and a great reaction by the fan across the aisle with yeah this great catch change up not a bad idea gets him out front In all likelihood, we are watching the, and he hopes he keeps it right here at three to two. We're watching the final pitches of the ball game for this right-hander. I mean, we'll see. No, he's due up second in the next inning, so, so I would are. imagine this is definitely his last inning. But boy, it's been awfully good again. Slider, and he wished he could have thrown that slider to Yanish. But credit Montero and Hudson. He he didn't just can it. He stayed with it. He realizes that's a weapon he needs. 
That's a high fastball. Finishes night. Two and one the count, two outs. Three two the score, the Reds lead it. The Reds have scored their runs in the last couple of chances. Do it again, he says. I thought about fighting. That's a solid take. Interesting call on two one to throw a pitch you know is going to be a ball. Mm -hmm. I think it's two and two, Darren. Because he fouled a ball down the line and then he swung and missed. All right, so the scoreboard so, has three two. We had there yeah, you go. There you he go. sets it right. Jerry Lane saying two two now, guys. Two and two. So two balls, two strikes. We'll set things correctly for you at home. Decoy inside. He goes away and he goes away with a, a changeup. There to make the play is Parra. Another fine outing by the newest member of the rotation. Time for the Hyundai Stretch Your Dollars. Seventh inning stretch. Standing performance tonight from Daniel Hudson, but you notice something interesting from Bronson Arroyo. Mark Grace posed a question during the game, and I'm going to answer the question after the game on whether it's an advantage or disadvantage for a right-handed pitcher to drop down sidearm to a left-handed hitter. And I'm curious to hear Gracie's viewpoint as a hitter to that same question. Yeah, D-backs down by one. They've got to get the offense going, guys. We'll see you after the game on Quest D-backs Live. Yeah, look forward to that conversation. Should be interesting. So let's see if the Diamondbacks now can answer a question for Daniel Hudson here here and that is have you guys stopped scoring runs tonight. Bronson Royal has been terrific since the first inning. Yeah and that's how he has been as we mentioned earlier. That one is away. And that outing by the way is like we like to call up in this booth a quality start. Doggone right it was. Don't come asking for a quality start if you throw six innings. Not in this booth. He went seven we're and not, gave up three runs. We're not that easy. Had him out in front of that changeup. So par rolls out. We'll see Church in a moment. But first, I want to remind all of you to enjoy Kachinko when you come on out to Chase Field. It's brought to you by Gila River Casino. Interactive kiosk near section 111. And of course here in the month of September we'll be calling a game from out there. So we're looking forward to that. We love Gila River Casinos as well. Here is Ryan Church to pinch it. A church batting for Daniel Hudson who has to be removed down by a run here late in the ball game. He's only got eight outs left so it's time to remove him and see if Ryan Church can maybe run into one. Or maybe get a rally started. But you're running out of outs now. He was 0 for 2 in the Washington series as that one is in. One of six on the road trip. 
four pinch hits this year, but has done so in 29 at bats. It'd be nice to see him turn that around right here. That pitch stays outside. It's a really bad idea to go out to the Kachiko area and do a ball game. Holy smokes. Really had to think about that for a while. The 2 1. Had him out front. Boy, it has been the soft stuff. First, you have Parra trying to pull it, and Church coming off the bench. He's just flat out put the brakes on on his stuff, and the hitter's still overly aggressive. Well, Diamondbacks, I mean, it's common knowledge. As hitters, they like to hit fastballs. And pitchers know that. That's what the scouting reports are that these guys like hitting fastballs. Anytime the Diamondbacks score six runs or more, Taco Bell gives away three free tacos with a purchase of a large drink between four and six the next day, participating location. Right down the middle, it's strike one. So Hudson, seven innings, nine hits, three runs earned, no walks, ten strikeouts. Is that any good? Out to third. And right now, he stands to be the loser with that outing in the ball game. Unfortunately, but certainly glad to see his development. By the way, as a Diamondback, his ERA, 2.12. And rest in peace, Bobby Thompson. He passed away at his home in Savannah, Georgia, on Monday night at 86 years old, had been in declining health as that one on the ground off the bat of Knicks, but one of the Great moments in the history of this game and a good baseball man passed away today and our condolences to his family. Darren is it the most in your mind is it the most famous home run of all time or is it the most famous call of all time or both. I think a little bit of both and I think it's the most famous home run because of the call. Absolutely. As hopefully one, one of these hopefully one of these days you'll. Repeat about five times in a row. The Diamondbacks win the pennant. Well, wouldn't that be nice? That'd be big league. Outside. One and one the count. Oh, my. Norberto. Well, what does that tell you about Votto? Not only does he hang in there, but not only does he drive, but he hustles. And he absolutely caught the Diamondbacks all around. Flat footed. Mm -hmm. 
And let's take a look at what happens. All it takes right there is that little bobble. And Chris Young launches it. And you're right. That's just getting caught napping right there by Chris Young, unfortunately. That kind of baseball is fun to watch. Going hard all the way, putting up MVP type numbers. And they will intentionally walk Scott Rowland. But we told you how good the bullpen has been. And they are making a season in which. Their ERA was on track to be the worst bullpen ERA in the history of the game. They're moving certainly off that list now. But the one thing they struggled more than anything with early in the season was games like this. It wasn't as if you watched the Diamondbacks bullpen blow save after save. But there were so many countless games in which they were down by a run or two in which in the blink of an eye they were down by six. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that can't happen tonight. I'm going to get that man back and healthy. Kirk Gibson was saying that before the ball game. What he likes most about his pen right now is just that. They're keeping us in game. It's not always locking down every single time, locking down a win. Giving your team an opportunity to win a game late. And since you and I have started working together now for four seasons, we just. We apologize if we bang it too much folks, but this to me is just as important. You'd like to have the lead, but as being up by one to keep it right yeah, here. This is like getting a hold. This is like bringing in your eighth inning guy to bridge the gap to the to the closer. That's what Norberto has to do. He has got to throw up a zero here and give his give his offense an opportunity. But if you give up a couple of runs here, well, well, you're asking for it. Your, your chance of winning are, are pretty much doomed. The left-hander fires away. Two and one the count. Let's take a look out of town and Roy Oswald paying dividends for Philadelphia. San Francisco losing, San Diego winning. Oh boy, the Padres have won Golly, eight of their last They're nine trying to games. run away. They're up six now. Oh in the my. Three and two, the the count. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Three and two, one out. I like it when you get feisty. Left hander trying to keep it right here. Norberto clearly uncomfortable right now, trying to find his way. The 3 2. High fly ball center field. And here comes the second out. And a nice job there. Oh, I thought it's off the mark. Kirk Gibson is going to come to the mound. He runs to the mound. You notice that? He runs to remove a pitcher from the game. You know, it looks like Blaine Boyer is going to come in and replace Jordan Norberto.
Peter Woodfork off to his right will be joining us on Saturday to talk minor league baseball and to update us on all the goings on throughout the week. Post your questions and we will interact with those that are a part of the present and the future for the Diamondbacks as Ryan Hannigan faces right hander Blaine Boyer. Still having trouble calling Gonzo an executive. Well, that's a great point by you. Breaking ball, good looking, but it's low. On Friday, we can call him an analyst. He'll be joining us in the booth while oh, you're, is he gonna, all right. you're on assignment. I just call him a ball player. That's a good compliment. You know? The 1 0. The fastball looked like it hit about three different gears as it got to the plate. Just calling the last person to ever wear that number. That was big league illustration, wasn't it? Pretty proud of you there. One and one the count. Blaine rocks and fires. Breaking ball dives low. Two and one the count to Hannigan. Ryan struck out and has grounded out a couple of times. Twelve RBIs in his last eleven ball games in which he has played. Is that one over the outside? Another fastball. Well, he's been taking a long a look at those fastballs. Fastball. And again, I think thought it dipped low, but it stayed right at the knees. Pretty pitch. So Boyer in his last six appearances has an ERA of about 2.8. So things coming together nicely for the right hander. Just scored upon one time. A little bit low. 96 miles an hour with some sink. Goodness. Running start here for the Cincinnati base runners. 3 2, two outs. Oh, just such a turning point in the game right here, Darren. This is the out you have to have if to, if to have a chance of winning this game. You saw big numbers from Hannigan in this situation. 3 2, runners go outside, ball four. Oh, the breaking ball there. Sure if Stubbs has been called back for a pinch hitter or he I just decided, he is, to, huh? decided to go home. I don't know. He just Jim Edmonds. Jim Edmonds. Edmonds was acquired, was sent from Milwaukee. In fact, when the Diamondbacks were in Milwaukee, traded away. And so the veteran goes to work, Jim Edmonds. Hit a double on Sunday, part of that three game sweep of the Florida Marlins. First, first hit of the red. It's in first base after Joey Votto was ejected in that game. And he takes a pitch out of the catcher's mitt. Joey's been ejected a handful of times this year, hadn't he? He has. Dusty Baker was talking about that before the game. Got a little hot under the collar. Dusty said, gone are the days. Of being able to, you know, have an early chit chat with an umpire. Well, that wasn't a strike. The 1 0. 1 and 1 the count. One and one the count. Right back to the mound. Boyer is there and he got it. Edmonds is erased. It's a family show, folks.
Fun. Mom and Dad, get tickets for this Sunday's D-Backs Rockies game. The first 5,000 kids will get a D-Backs back-to-school backpack courtesy of Cox. Call 602-462-4794 or visit dbacks.com slash giveaways. Jim Edmonds is now in center field as that one stays high. Taking over as he came in as a pinch hitter. Three runs, ten hits, and no errors for the Reds. Two runs, five hits, and an error for the Diamondbacks. Change up, and that has been his ticket to paradise in the second half of the ball game. We were told he's been throwing it a lot, didn't throw it a ton early, but boy, he has gotten a lot of outs with that pitch last few innings. Bet you doesn't drop down to Kelly Johnson here. This is what happened. Because if he does, And that has been it for the Diamondbacks this evening off Bronson Arroyo. That was back in the first inning. He went with a fast ball, has Edmonds tracking going back. It's over his head, high off that wall. Kelly hustles on around there. You have it, the tying run in scoring position. Went with a high fast ball, higher arm angle, scalded to the center field. That's a good start here to the eighth inning. Like you said, this is a high fastball above the belt, but hard hitting Kelly Johnson does just that. Hits it hard over the heads of Cincinnati's newest outfielder, and that's Jim Edmonds. So lead up lead off double here in the heart of the order. Trying to make some noise here. Trying to steal one late. Justin Upton. Trying to drive something to the right side. Bare minimum, get that runner to third, but he'd love to drive it in. Let me hit something right over the head of Brandon Phillips in the right center. 0 and 1 the count. Right now, Justin's just got to slow the game down a little bit. Try not to make it all happen. Take a deep breath and take what he gives you. Sure, a home run would be lovely. Huh. Ground ball to the right side would work too. With no one on base, opponents hit 210 against Arroyo this year. With runners in scoring position, still he's tough, but it goes up to 245. And a lot of hits though. Boy, is he feeding right into his aggression. Oh, yeah. That's a couple of breaking balls that are off the plate. So instead of a 2 and 0 count, Justin, by being so aggressive, sits in an 0 2 count. You can see that ball a good seven or eight inches off the plate. He's got some uh, shades of Levon Hernandez in this attack. That time Justin did lay off the low and away breaking ball. You buying what I'm selling? A little bit of Levo in the approach of Arroyo? Yeah, in the approach, but Bronson throws much harder than LeVon Hernandez. No, I understand. And, but LeVon, he throws that slowly by, by choice, and you're right, just the, the slow stuff. The bigger the, the bigger the moment in the game, the slower LeVon Hernandez will throw it. And you're right, Bronson Arroyo is doing exactly that here to Justin Upton. That was, that was almost an Ephus pitch right there, but he fouled it back. And then the other part of the story, as we've told you, is that changeup has been a money pitch for Arroyo late in the game. Well, he's probably got Justin set up for a high fastball. Let's see what he goes with. Four breaking balls in a row. Let's see what he goes with. High fastball. And Justin got a piece of it and stays alive. The Reds bullpen. Nick Manson and Arthur Rhodes. It's a pretty good bullpen. It's a bullpen that stands with a 3.83 ERA, so you're right, it is a pretty good bullpen. Dusty's bullpen below four. Only one bullpen below three in the National League. That was in San Diego. Back out. Two and two, the count. Went with the Frisbee breaking ball that time and missed. So Justin's seen six pitches in this at bat.
Brett Farr. Good point. Two and two the count. As in pulling a breaking ball and the runner has to stay put at center. So just feeding off the aggression of the younger hitter. Taking that helmet with him down the down the tunnel. I don't blame him. What a job Bronson Arroyo does as he trots off. Probably pretty proud of himself the way the ball game started. He did awfully well, and he's going to turn it over to 75-year-old Arthur Rhodes. What a year Rhodes is having. We'll explain when we come back. Living through the start, every pitcher of his salt wants to stay in the ball game. Always feels like they could have done more. Brian Price, right over there to talk with him, not surprised. Living through this inning in this situation. What's brewing as we take a look ahead? Volquez and Lopez, and then of course on Thursday we've got Joe Saunders. A couple left. He's gonna lock horns on Thursday. Against Travis Wood. Rhodes. Broke into the big leagues a long, long time ago. Makes his way back. For another season. Didn't know if he'd have another season. He's just been fabulous. He has been incredible this year. The 0 1. Back to back fastballs right on the outside corner. He broke in, folks, with Baltimore in 1991. Is when he broke into the game. And he used to throw so hard. He still throws hard. But he used to have upper 90s from the left side. Right back to the outside corner he goes. Missed up. For sake of the discussion, when he broke in with Baltimore, as you can see, good numbers. Some of the guys. On his staff, a 39 year old by the name of Mike Flanagan. Some of his teammates, 30 year old Cal Ripken, 39 year old Dwight Evans. Yes. And he blows him away. He has been around this game a long, long, long time. Chasing the fastball up out of the zone. Boy, that was impressive. Still standing out there at second, Kelly Johnson with that leadoff double. Early in his career, Rhodes was a starter, and then in '97, he moved to the bullpen and never left. That's a handful of saves, Gracie, but has always been a 
Bit. Specialist or this setup guy. man. Yeah, he's been this guy. Outside corner fastball. He's been so important to bullpens that in 97 on a successful Baltimore team in the year in which he had a 3.02 ERA out of the pen, he got MVP votes that year. That's saying something. And this year at 40 for the first time ever an all star. And it was well deserved. The 0 1. Boy, Grace, that's kind of where it's at, huh? Just I'm throwing you high, hard fastballs away. See what you can do what with you, them. What are you going to do? That's what. Made Randy Myers a great living all those years. Hard fastballs in the outside corner. Missed with that one. At the high school in Waco, Texas. So he was born and raised. Seven years older than that man who already is a veteran. The 2 1. Yeah. Right on the outside corner. There's no secrets to a big Arthur Rhodes. The 2-2. Two -two. Outside, 3-2 and two the count. Left-handed batters. Have hit 219 against Rhodes this year. Righties 138. Trying to hang around, find a way. The 3 2. Got it. Forty years old and frustrating the kids so much so that they're breaking their bats after it bats. Ninth inning, Reds three to two. Follow Fox Sports Arizona's coverage of D-backs baseball on your iPhone, iPod Touch, BlackBerry, and Android with MLB.com at bat 2010. It features play-by-play, -play, video highlights, and live audio broadcasts. Visit dbacks.com today on your iPhone, iPod Touch, Android, or BlackBerry for more details. Oh, good advice. Thank you for that. Boyer goes to work on a solid read. In on the hands, that one is fouled off. Only one the count to Paul Yanich for the visiting Reds. Three runs, ten hits, and no errors for the home standing D backs. Two runs, six hits, and one error. St. Louis, by the way, lost. They lost to Milwaukee three to two. And that one is in, and that comes into play because 
Cincinnati came in with a lead of one game, so they have a chance to make it two. One and two, the count. Giannis picked on a, a hanging slider, and that's the difference in the ball game. Two and two, the count. Get him to offer very, very close. So we roll on. Full count, three to two the score. The Reds lead it here in the top of the ninth inning. A roller has Reynolds to his left. Throwing. Earlier had an errand throw in the dirt. He was bailed out over at first by his mate, but Adam, Adam couldn't go get that one and stay on the back. Yeah, the mistake he makes here is throwing on the run when he didn't really need to. He had time to plant his feet and make a rock solid throw, but instead he chose to throw it on the run and he pulled it. LaRoche had to make a heck of a play just to keep that one from possibly bouncing into the stands. So now Johnny Gomes. Johnny and his brother Joey both at one time professional ball players together. Joey with some time in the Padres organization. And both give a lot of credit to their mom. They took care of them alone and did a majority of the work one and one to count. He's got 13 homers. He's got 66 RBIs. Got out of the gate. A big first half. Things have slowed since, but still throwing up 66 RBIs and 360 at bats. That's that's doing it. And that one got him. Got that elbow pad, so that one won't hurt too bad. You're talking about Gomes going through as a young man a lot. Back in 02, as that bullpen phone starts to ring. Gomes actually is a very, very young man, had a heart attack. So to begin your career and to make it to the big leagues with that wrapped around, very, very scary. The rest, as they always say, has been kind of not a whole lot to worry about when that happens to you as a young man. Just Brandon Phillips was 23 years old when that happened. Kirk Gibson, get that bullpen rolling, and Gibby may be bringing the hook with him. So he has made the call to the bullpen. Carrasco himself a sip of water and away we go.
uh, teamed up to support going gonzo for kids to possibly impact the lives of children. The D-backs are offering discounted tickets to a number of upcoming games worth five dollars from each ticket. Are donated to the Boys and Girls Club of Metropolitan Phoenix. Go to dbacks.com slash gonzo fox for the list of games, tickets, purchases, and info. And I have a special telecast with some goodies and some fundraising going on on Friday night. Stay tuned for more on that. DJ Carrasco takes over for the 52nd time this year. An ERA of 4.02. Breaking ball nearly grabbed the inside corner. 1 0 of the count to Phillips. Does he sacrifice bunting here, Gracie? It looks like he is, yeah. I think it's the right play. Didn't look comfortable in doing so. One and one the count. Well, right now, if you want to get the sack, sack bunt down, you're better off bunting it to the third baseman, bunting it firmly towards Mark Reynolds. If you can make Mark Reynolds field the bunt, you're going to have a successful sacrifice. The Reds with 49 sacrifice bunts this year. It's about the middle of the pack. Arizona with just 32 as he stabs at that one. The runner goes to third. The throw went to second. Well, he just set up Miguel Montero. Bigger than life there. Montero took the bait. And boy, did Yanish just school the youngster there. No chance for Stephen Drew. He knew the minute Montero came up to fire to second, he was going to take off for third. That is a heads up play. Now, I would imagine Brandon Phillips swinging away. Boy, and in this inning, an error and a hit batter. Exactly. And then a mistake there. And he was hit there. For Janish, by the way, his first stolen base of the year. And Aaron, and now two hit batters in the end. And now an opportunity for the Cincinnati Reds to get themselves some breathing room. Gets that back forearm. DJ Carrasco going to have to do some fancy dancing now. Drew comes in at short quite a bit inside to the backstop it goes and another run scores four to two the Reds lead it the Reds just relentless with so much to play for and playing like it just a fastball that Miguel couldn't reach he was sitting inside but he just couldn't reach it and that one gets away and with Jordan Norberto already being used all these left handed hitters are going to see right handed pitching infield comes in even more huge swing that got a piece of Montero he hops up still one and one the count you're talking about these Reds and how relentless they are I mean this is 4.9 runs per game. Broken bad roller. Kelly keeps the runner at third as he comes in and vacuums it up. So one out. Big time pitch there from Carrasco. Just eight nicks up with a fastball in. I got to put this guy on. I got to take my chances with the on deck hitter who's having a heck of a year in Scott Rowland. I got to give my right handed pitcher an opportunity to do something against a right handed hitter. And that's exactly what Kirk Gibson is doing. 
I'm a big believer in not. I don't, I don't like messing with MVPs. So in this inning, they've got an error, a hit batter, another hit batter, a stolen base, and a wild pitch with the bases loaded. That probably goes an unearned run, wouldn't it? No, I don't think so. No, not on a wild pitch. Yeah, but he got on via the air. That's right. He got on with the air. That is correct. Lead balloon has kind of hit Chase Field here. Diamondbacks need something, maybe a double play ball to get some kind of momentum back. Drops down, flips a frisbee up there. Carrasco did that a couple of times in Washington on Sunday in his outing. And he did it to success, got some swings. Oh, pretty good slider there. Didn't get the call. Arizona with four wild pitches this year with the bases loaded. That's the highest total in the big leagues. They've got 16 walks with the bases loaded. That's the second highest total in the major leagues. With 2 0. Crossed up, and that hurts, and that is scary. Well, it also took a strike away. Well, he called it a strike. Oh, my goodness. He called it a strike, and it was a strike, but Miguel just got smoked by a fastball. He was obvious, obviously expecting something else. I mean, this is a strike, but Miguel's looking for a breaking ball. So the count, two and one. We'll go through those signs again. Well, just a forgettable inning so far. I mean, forgettable for Arizona. Let's hope that they can maybe get a big ground ball and get out of it. The one run is already crossed. I mean, it's very rare that that bit pitch gets called a strike because, well, it's not even close to being caught. But it was right down the middle. But Miguel was expecting a curveball. Well, he, he got, he that got crossed up again. And Jerry Lane's giving it to him a little bit like, I don't hey, blame him. get it together I don't out blame there. Him. You just had a meeting on the mound. Let's go. Said something to the effect of get it right. And you see in the man in the foxhole with him getting beat up too by pitch. Well, he, he got crossed up again. That time he was able to catch it. Jerry's thinking, I don't want to take one in the teeth. The 2 2. Bouncing ball, base in left field. One run is in. Another run come on down. And a big inning now for the Reds. And that, that's the first hit in this inning. And you could just see the way that at bat was transpiring that nothing good was going to come out of it for the Diamondbacks. Pitcher and a catcher that weren't on the same page. And then he drops down and just leaves a slider right there for Roland to smack. Bang, and he does. Here's Jay Bruce. 11 homers. 45 RBIs to the right side. LaRoche with a little flip. On the first double play. 6 2 Reds.
all-star. You see, he had the energy to slow things down when he needed to. It's Bronson Arroyo. Change-ups, breaking balls. We want to come out of this ball game. It's interesting, speaking of slowing things down, as Coco Cordero comes on, it's not a safe situation. The Diamondbacks, I think, that last inning guilty of what Kirk Gibson talks about a lot. He's spoken with us about it, Greg. So that when things maybe start to go awry a bit, the game speeds up, the situation gets a little bit ugly. He wants his guys to understand, you take control of the situation. Don't go faster. And that's what happened Slow in that last down, inning. Exactly. And because when you when you panic and that's that's all that's all he's trying to do is when he says slow things down don't panic because it, when when things start to move fast that's be, when things are moving fast because panic setting in and when panic starts to set in that's when mistakes tend to snowball and you just saw a perfect example of that three run night for the Cincinnati Reds the one error by Mark Reynolds and all of a sudden things just started to snowball all of a sudden, hit batsman, can't get signs right, base hits, errors, all kinds of zaniness because the team as a whole this year has not had the ability to slow things down. Take a step back off the mound. Step out of the batter's box when things start to take a deep breath. Tell yourself a joke. The one, two. Off the plate, two and two, the count. Cordero, over his last couple of outings, has had a bout with the ERA spiking and a lot of walks. His mm -hmm. last seven and two thirds innings, he's walked 10. Well, that'll help get strikes <laughs> called. That was a good. When it's six inches off the plate, yeah, you're not going to walk anybody. Here's Stephen Drew. That pitch is low, 1 0 the count. Yes, Cordero in his last seven and two thirds inning, six hits, five runs, ten walks. He's been pitching out of a lot of messes or into a lot of messes. Pouring in strikes so far tonight. Francisco Cordero signed with the Reds a couple of years back as a free agent. As that one sails up and away. He's been a Red since 08. Put together safe seasons of 34, 39, and 32 in Cincinnati. Did some real good things prior to that in Milwaukee, Texas. Very good closer for the Brewers, wasn't he, Darren? Yeah, he had a, he had a good, uh, a really good year and a half there. In 07 in Milwaukee, he had 44 saves. And part of the season in 06 had a 1.6 ERA out of the bullpen. He doesn't have quite as much as he used to have on his fastball back then a couple of years back. But he'd be fun to watch. He'd face a team like, let's say, the Rockies. And he'd get a save, all fastballs. Mm -hmm. The next night, all sliders. Really? He had that kind of ability. The 2-2. Two -two. That one sails away. And, you know, he was, what, getting maybe another mile or two? He didn't throw that much harder. Well, that tells you right there, he's just having fun. He's having fun. He's toying with the opponent. That's how good he was. And he's still awfully good. Oh, you bet. The 3 2. We'll do it again. 3 and 2. Same two teams tomorrow night. We'll have it for you. By the way, you gotta you have to wonder. This is a little bit off topic, but it ties in both these teams as the 3 2. Is on a dive played by the second baseman Phillips, and he fires in time for the out. A fabulous play by Brandon Phillips. 
was a very good defensive team. And they're anchored. They're infield by a gold glover there in Phillips, a gold glover at third base, and Scott Rowland. There's a reason why they're in first place. The Reds publicly saying heading into this series that they expect to take two of three. They feel like their battle will be on other stops on this series along the way. That one is away. Bronson yeah, they've Arroyo got to, they've said. They've got to go to San Francisco and San Diego, don't they? Yes, they do. Arroyo said, and I quote, in our minds, we know that Arizona is a team that if we play well, we should have an opportunity to take two out of three. I think they've got number one right now. Number one. High fives all around. Arroyo is the winner, and he wins for the 13th time this year. A great outing by Daniel Hudson is wasted, unfortunately, for Arizona. And the bullpen, the defense in the last inning, certainly hit a speed bump. And so Cincinnati, to back up that quote, he went on to say, we know we're going to have a dog fight with L.A. and San Francisco. We need to get it done in Arizona. They gain a game. They are two games up on the St. Louis Cardinals. They gain a game. Bronson Arroyo, if you're going to speak, back it up. And he certainly backed it up. He got the win here along with his Cincinnati Red teammates. And unfortunately, a revert back, uh, the ninth inning, a revert back to earlier in the year. And I'm sure Gibby will have uh, plenty to say about that after the game. And we'll talk about all of that in Quest Diamondbacks Live, our post-game show. Let's get it going. The Reds win it by a score of 6-2. to two. Good to be back with all of you talking baseball. Guys, keep it up right now.